Well, hello again from Fat Doctor TV. It's great to see you again, and I hope I'm seeing less of you like I said last time. Again, this is Dr. Greg Oliver, the Fat Doctor at Fat Doctor TV, and today on our episode, we're going to have a science class. Now, not a lot of great detailed science, but we're all going to get on the same page about the science of eating and weight management. Uh, we're going to break it down into its component parts. And uh, one thing I like to say is that uh, America is on a high fact diet. That's F A C T, high fact diet. We know everything. All my patients, I mean, even 300, 400 pound patients come to me and they know all about uh, calories and points and, and uh, fats and grams, uh, carbohydrates, all that sort of thing. So we're a very knowledgeable group of people when it comes to um, the details but we don't seem to apply those. So today what I thought we'd do is just start at ground zero here, just uh, go over some basics of the science of nutrition, and uh, then we're all on the same page and we can move on from there so we can get into some other details as we go further down the path here. Uh, so I wanna review some basic facts about, uh, uh, about uh, food. And the first thing I wanna talk to you about is calories. And uh, the term calorie and actually what a calorie is kind of came about back in 1824 by a guy named Nicholas Clément. And uh, Nicholas or Clement, Clement, uh, Nicholas uh, found that, it, he determined that a calorie was a unit of heat. And uh, in science, we don't use the term calorie much anymore. It's kind of obsolete. It's now been turned that, that unit of heat or energy is now called a joule. And that's kind of in the international science uh, um, area. But calorie is still used by nutritionists, dietitians, and people in food science. Uh, it's just taken off and become part of it. It's even used on labels. So let me explain that. Uh, scientifically, a calorie is the amount of energy it takes to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree Celsius. Then there's a term called kilocalorie, which is like a thousand of those little calories. And that is a term used to raise the temperature of 1,000 grams of water, one degree centigrade. So that's all it is. It's just a unit of heat. Now, in food science, what we've done is we've taken the term kilocalorie, the big calorie, and uh, turned that into the amount of energy that is potentially in a substance of food. So it's not that uh, a piece of meat actually has energy in it, it has potential energy. So that when it enters our body, it's broken down into its component parts, and when it meets with oxygen in our body, it's what we call cellular respiration, not the breathing type of respiration, but cellular respiration where oxygen and a food substance come together and they're broken down into fuel for the cells in our body to use. So, food energy, we use the term kcal or kilocalorie, and that's potential energy released during that cellular respiration process. Now, there are different potential energies for different types of foods. <coughs> Food components are broken down into fats, proteins, carbohydrates, and alcohols. Essentially, those are the main ones. There are some smaller ones, but those are the main ones that we derive our energy from. Those are our fuel sources. Uh, there are non-caloric uh, uh, food sources where we don't get energy from, but we have to have them. Those are water, vitamins, minerals, caffeine, and spices. Some flavors also, natural flavors, have no calories in them. Uh, so those are the non-caloric things. Now, a question a lot of people have is, how many calories are in these substances or in these components of our food? Uh, and it's been discovered that uh, fat per gram has nine calories or kilocalories. Uh, proteins and carbohydrate have right about the same amount, which is four calories per gram, and alcohol has seven calories per gram. So suddenly you already know that if I eat more fat or drink more alcohol, I'm gonna get more calories uh, per unit or per gram. If I eat protein and carbohydrates, I'm going to get less calories. So there's something that you wanna remember. Um, how do they determine this? Well, in the science, they determine this by putting foods inside this uh, machine called a bomb calorimeter, and it basically explodes the food, or burns the food, kind of, we'll say, burns the food, and determines how much energy is released in that food. Now, because they burn that food to a crisp in there, uh, 
that really burns and uses more calories than our body can can actually get out of that. So gram for gram, our body doesn't get the same amount of calories or energy expended as they do in the, in the laboratory. And they calculate that about 85% of that energy that they see in the lab is what our body can actually get or, or can be released from those food substances. So uh, that's basically uh, the gist of calories and the components and what has calories and doesn't have calories. More importantly, what people want to know is how many calories do I need in a day? And this is a very common thing. People come into my office and they say, Doctor, I think my metabolism is low. I don't think I burn up many calories. Well, we can measure it. In our office, we have two different ways to measure it. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. But it's important to know about how many calories you burn resting. Now, um, there's something called the basal metabolic rate, but that's actually that's hard to measure because you'd have to be totally you know, near sleep, not moving, uh, no stimulants, nothing going on in your body. So we do what's called a resting metabolic rate. We put someone in a reclining position, we get them calmed down, we make sure they haven't eaten anything or taken any kind of stimulants like caffeine or nicotine for several hours before the test, and then we have them lay down, we clamp off their nose, and have them breathe through a tube that goes into a machine. This machine actually measures what's called oxygen consumption. Now, remember, remember before I said that, that the uh, energy that we get from our fuel is derived from us using oxygen with the fats, carbohydrates, proteins, or alcohol to combine and create the release of that, of that energy in the form of calorie uh, energy. And, um, so we can actually measure how much oxygen is consumed by the person because the machine measures how much goes in and how much comes out and it tells us how much they're consuming and that oxygen is consumed basically to burn our fuel. So that's a very good way to measure how many calories a person uh, uses at rest today. Uh, now also when we know that resting number, we know some other factors like their age, their weight, um, their lifestyle, things like that, we can get a pretty good idea of how many calories they burn during their normal daily activities and then also how many calories they burn when they're exercising. So we give the patients a printout that says here's your resting metabolic rate, how many calories you expend during the day in activity, here is your basic uh, activity uh, uh, calorie expenditure, and here's what you can burn when you exercise, say, for 30 minutes or an hour moderately. So we can give our patients that. And then we can formulate a dietary plan that says, look, if you're burning 1,800 calories a day, we need to get you on 13 or 1,400 calories a day so there's a deficiency and you can lose weight. This is all basic science, and I'm sure many, many of you have read about this and understand that. But again, we're just kind of all getting on the same page. There's lots of other medical factors too. How much lean body mass a person has. Um, is there thyroid uh, at the high end or low end of normal? Because thyroid is a gland in our neck. It secretes hormone and that hormone uh, regulates our temperature, regulates our, our me metabolic rate also. So uh, there are other factors involved. Illnesses, things like that can play a big role. Even the temperature outside or the temperature that we're living in uh, in a room can determine how much uh, caloric expenditure we have. The hotter it is, the more we burn up. The colder it is, the less we burn up. You know, sometimes in the cold weather we have to shiver. And the reason our muscles shiver and we can't control it, we're trying to increase our energy levels because it's dropping in that cold temperature. So there's lots of factors involved. Also, the type of food that we eat. Let's say you're on a high fiber diet. Unfortunately, most of us Americans are not on a high fiber diet. But let's say you're on a high fiber diet. Fiber does have some caloric value, but more importantly, it moves through our system without a lot of calories moving into our system. And in fact, it does absorb fat, so it decreases the amount of fat that we absorb in our body. So if you eat a lot of fiber, you're going to decrease the amount of intake that you get, the amount of calories you get. And so it's important when you read a food label, you can see the fats, you can see the carbohydrates, you can see the proteins, the total calories in that particular meal or serving or whatever it is you're buying and reading the food label about, 
Also, you can see how much fiber is in there because the higher the fiber, the less calories you're actually going to get from that food. Also, that happens because uh, uh, it not only decreases the absorption, it also helps our digestive tract and it moves transit, moves the waste products through much faster. So there's lots of things that can uh, affect our caloric expenditure through the day. Exercise does, our lean body mass does. The more muscle we have and the less fat we have, the higher our metabolism is. And that's why many people want people to want, want uh, people to lose weight by exercising and increasing their total body mass. We have another way to measure uh, caloric expenditure in the office. We use what's called imped impedance and electrical impedance. We actually stand someone on a scale in bare feet, have them grasp uh, another uh, metal end of the scale, and we pass a light electric current. No, we don't shock them, they don't feel anything, uh, although maybe it should be a shocking experience to get them motivated, but we don't shock them, but that light electric current goes through the body and uh, different tissues like lean body uh, tissues such as muscle, uh, there's greater or there's a different resistance and a different impedance of the electricity than there is with fat or water tissue. Of course, we know our bodies are made up uh, mostly of water. So what happens is we can actually measure how much lean body tissue a person has or muscle. We can measure how much fat tissue they have. And we can measure how much body water they have. Then there's a calculation that's done in the equipment that actually tells us, uh, based on those parameters, their age, their weight, all those things, uh, approximately how many calories they expend in a day at rest and with exercise. That's not quite as accurate as the oxygen consumption method, but it gives us a good idea, and we track that from time to time. And as people are exercising and losing weight, we actually can see their metabolism go up. We can measure that on a month-to-month -month basis. So there are lots of ways to do that. Now, hopefully today we've been able to give you some ideas, just the basic facts about uh, calories and fats, carbohydrates, proteins, alcohol, things like that that you're taking into your body, what it means for your metabolism, what it means for your calories coming in versus calories being expended or burned up as we say. So these are just some facts I wanted you to know, but more importantly, once you know the facts, you have to take that and create a plan. Now having a plan is important, but taking action is really the most important thing. Ideas and plans without action are meaningless. So if you have the, the facts, you have the plan, you take the action, you're going to get the results you want. And that's really what we're after overall. So you're part of the team here. That today's drawing up here. And I know sometimes I don't even tell you what the drawing is. I always have some picture up here. Today is teamwork. It says here teamwork. When the best and the brightest come together, the possibilities are endless. So now we're all on the same page. We've had our science class for today. So class is dismissed. And again, this is Dr. Greg Oliver from Fat Doctor TV, and The Fat Doctor, and I'm looking forward to seeing less of you on our next show. Have a great day.